Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we will be doing another ESO PvP tier list, this time for update 35, the Lost Depths DLC. Now there's a lot to cover in this video. The meta has completely shifted. So you're either going to absolutely love the PvP tier list or you're going to hate it. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Okay, so before hopping into the meat and potatoes of this video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat. You guys are absolutely awesome. Now, this is a PvP tier list for update 35 after it has been released. The reason I'm emphasizing after is because some content creators decided it was a good idea to make a PvP tier list even before the patch was released. Yeah, go figure. And if you guys want access to this tier maker, I will leave a link to it down in the description below to where you can just, just literally click on the link and you can make your own tier list. Uh, this one's preset for you guys that I made for you. So yeah, you're welcome. And if you want to help support the channel, more on that uh, at the end of the video as well. So without further ado, guys, let's kind of go through this class by class, spec by spec. And I'm going to explain kind of what some of the changes were in the patch notes if you guys are unfamiliar, which kind of makes these classes good or bad. All right, I've played for a week solid literally every single day i've come across every single class that it has to offer and it is completely different it is night and day difference guys i'm not gonna lie to you to start out with we're going to start with the magica sorcerer now magica sorcerer will sort actually in general went through a lot of changes they nerf to crystal weapons they nerf to mines even they nerf mines to where you cannot simultaneously hit people with a stack of mines to incur a lot of damage it was in the patch notes and apparently they felt that this was needed to be nerfed i mean let's be real guys who uses mines okay if you use mines you're an absolute giga chad on the magica sorcerer okay i'm just gonna tell you these are like 4600 casts like if you can afford to cast these, more power to you. Why they felt the need to nerf this um, is beyond me, but that's not what makes this class uh, the tier I'm going to assign it. There are a few other uh, uh, nerfs as well, like Bound, Bound Arminus, nerf light attack damage, and just the overall sort play style this patch, guys, it needs to be reworked. You do not do enough damage whatsoever to, to burst anyone with this very high health pool, very tanky meta. And I hate to start out the video like this, but Magicka Sorcerer compared to last patch where it was probably like a A tier class where you can pick it up and play with it. It just has no place in the meta. I'm actually putting this in trash tier. I've talked to some of the top tier Sorks like Metallic Monk, and he is not even playing Magicka Sorcerer this patch. And he's pretty much like a one trick on that thing. He's like one of the best out there. And for him to use his Magicka Sorcerer as a crafter right now, it's uh, that lets you know that there's a problem. And even myself, you can play the Magic of Sorcerer one of two different ways. You can play with a very high max and magic build, or you can play a roly poly oly high risk, high reward, bursty build. And guys, if you play the high magic and magic, maximum magic like build play style, you just don't do enough damage. Like your heals are absolutely terrible because you're having to stack into max magic and you're having to double bar multiple sets, which kind of takes away from your efficiency on the class, you know, whatsoever. And then if you try to run it the other way to where um, you have um, vigor as your heals and you don't have a burst heal on the magic of sorcerer, mind you, unless you run the pet and all these these critiques i'm giving you guys like my opinions on this tier list is from a 1vx or maybe even a 2vx standpoint not group play group play is completely different that's a whole nother tier list for another time but you don't have a burst heal your hots are pretty crappy they nerf rapid regeneration into the ground so you just cannot heal if you don't run ward so you have to play around your streak very very effectively your roll dodges very very effectively and it's just it's it's not good anymore the whole play style the, the, the whole kind of identity of the sword kind of needs reworked i mean it, it just doesn't do enough damage i mean simple as that next is the stamina sorcerer and this is kind of with the affirmations that i said earlier of the nerfs to crystal weapons mount armaments you know nerfs to a lot of attacks in general um there's a very specific way you can play this meta and it's it's all about burst ever since the nerf to dots i'm pretty much every single dot in the game um so there's sticky and non-sticky dots so sticky dots a, a good example is um, like icy conjurer or or um oblivion's foe um, th th those are sticky dots but most of the the, the class dots for example have been happened so this is not a dot meta whatsoever so the only way you're going to kill anyone whatsoever is with really really high bursts and you would think that the stamina sorcerer 
could actually do that. But to be honest, guys, it's it, it's kind of like a, a, a bombing run class. I mean, it's there's really not much to it. The old Fang Rush build actually works really, really well still yet, somehow. And you're pretty much a one and done. You come in, blow your load, and you're completely out of resources. It's not a tanky class. There's not a, a lot of good sets to, to run on Sam Sork, in my opinion. And I haven't seen hardly any stam sorks in open world like very very few and even when i do they're always streaking away and it's just it's just a very underwhelming class and for that reason i'm gonna put it in c tier next on the list is my baby the magica dragonite oh boy guys did we get amalgamation of nerfs man nerf molten with they nerf open soul into the freaking ground they they nerfed all the dots so we we literally have no bursts on the dragonite anymore the, the only thing you have is molten whip and it's instead of a molten whip or seething fury stacks it, it's called it's soothing fury stacks okay it's it's you hit like a wet noodle there's just not enough damage on the dk you you can push everything into damage and guys it's it's just not there um, unless you come across some new cakes and, uh, and some noob cakes in open world, man, you're, you're just not going to kill hardly anyone. Like, especially people with like 30, 35 K health pools. Whip just does not do enough damage. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it is. They nerfed Oaken Soul to kind of nerf the whole permanent corrosive DK build. <laughs> you're welcome. And it would be okay if Zoss just nerfed Oaken Soul. But the fact that they nerfed Oaken Soul the way they did, and then they also nerfed Molten Whip of all things, it, it just makes this class so, I won't say difficult to play, but your kill potential is very, very low. Your time to kill is pretty low. And yes, you are tanky. Yes, you are survivable. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to kill people. And because I love the Dragonite, normally I would probably put this in B tier, honestly, but um, you can still run Corosa with Sea Serpent's Quill and still hit reasonably hard to kill people. But I'm probably going to put Dragonite in A tier just because the rest of the classes are, are kind of bad too. And to be honest with you, it just feels like everything is bad across the board compared to the last patch. You don't feel very powerful. So it's kind of hard to do these rankings because I'm trying to look at what it was last patch and compare them to this patch. And just, just everything just seems like poop. So next is the Stamina Dragonite. Now, the difference between the Stamina Dragonite and the Magicka Dragonite is uh, not a lot. Um, not a lot at all. Um, the Magicka Dragonite, yeah, while it is more fun to play, it does have a, a lot less burst potential than the Stamina Dragonite. Now, Stamina Dragonite, you can actually get away with Dizzing Swing Spam, which is back. And because Dizzing Swing Spam is back in the meta, you actually have a new CP passive now called Exploiter. So whenever you set someone off balance, you're going to be doing 10% more damage to them. So even though they nerf Molten Whip, uh, Dizzing Swing's back, does a little bit more damage. Um, I see a lot more Stamina Dragonites than I do Magicka Dragonites right now. And to be honest with you guys, I think Stamina Dragonites are a lot scarier to fight when they're in their Corrosive. Um, I've come across a few really good Stam DKs. And I've come across a few really good mag DKs, and it's just night and day difference between the, the way they perform. I would say of all the classes here, if I had to put something in absolute S god tier, um, it wouldn't be really anything. So when it comes to actually placing the Stamina Dragonite, um, normally I would place this in A tier, but I do think it has a little bit of an edge up on the Magic of Dragonite. And if there was a half tier here, like an A++ tier between meta and A tier, I would probably put it there. But there's not, but it is leaning on the high side. So I'm going to put Stamina Dragonite, and this might be biased, okay, um, in, in meta tier. If you guys disagree with me, please let me know down in the comments. All right, guys, so next is the Nightblade. So we're going to go over the, the Stamina Nightblade first. Now, there has been a lot of changes to a lot of the proc sets, which made Nightblade so viable and so scary in the open world. Um, they did nerf Glorians into the ground, like just completely nerfed it into the ground. So if you plan on ganking with Glorians, it ain't gonna happen, brother. All right, so Nightblades are really sneaksies, and they've developed other new proc sets that hit just as hard as Chlorian. So um, as the meta has developed here over the past week, I have seen so many scavenging demise sets. You know, the the, the kind of shoots the little the little spray boy on you, the the AOE cone effect. That thing hits hard into a Celine's. I mean, that build is crazy. Okay, I don't really want to mention builds in this video but um if you're gonna play a ganker like 
that shit hurts a lot okay and yes it does take a little bit to set it up because there's like a two second delay on the scavenging mall you know Celine's. but if you want to stun someone during that meantime it's pretty much undodgeable okay so if you want to go a ginkgo route definitely go that route uh, instead of doing calorians now whether other sets you guys want to run i don't know but when it comes to like actually making this a viable 1bx class and when it comes to, to both magic and stamina actually it's 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 tough so they nerfed dark cloak by 42 percent which is pretty incredible but they they added another effect to where it increases its effectiveness by 150 percent while you're standing still and if you go take a look at the developers comments it's like oh well this is to kind of coincide with the pve you know hold my ground play style again guys stop balancing the game together differentiate pve effects from pvp effects and you won't be banging your heads against the walls off to have this problem to begin with until you start doing this you're going to have more updates just like update 35 where you're not only pissing off the pvp community and now where all your money is coming from you're now pissing off the pve community okay so that is not a road you want to go down so for that reason i will say stamina nightblade in general is just more survival than magic and nightblade so i'm probably going to put stamina nightblade in b tier for now and then we're just gonna do a two for one. These classes play the same. I can never tell if I'm attacked by a Magic and Nightblade or a Stamina Nightblade. It really doesn't matter. They hurt like hell and then they teabag you after they kill you. So I'm just gonna put Magic and Nightblade right here or Stamina Nightblade. I'm uh, probably down in the C tier, to be honest with you. I'm actually, no, I'm gonna put it back up in B tier because you can at least bomb a little bit on the Magic and Nightblade, which is really the only usefulness of this class. Either you're gonna be ganking, you're gonna be bombing small groups. In my opinion, I am not a Nightblade main on console. I did play quite a bit of Nightblade, but you know, the times have changed over a few years, right? So for that reason, I'm gonna kind of put these on the same tier just because I can't even differentiate the two, to be honest. All right, so the next class we're going to be talking about is the Warden. Now, the Warden did get a lot of love this patch, but I don't know if it was enough to actually put it in the meta tier. So, Warden did get uh, some change to its passives. Now, the more companions that you have, the more spell penetration that you get. Uh, they rework Subterranean Salt. There's no other reason to use the other builds to where you do instances of damage at 3 seconds and then 6 seconds, which actually amplifies the damage substantially on the 6 second tick of this, which is what Magic of Sorcerer should be doing because with your curse, you have have a secondary echo effect just like subterranean assault so if you want to buff the sork in any way i think vicious curse needs to hit like a truck on that second tick but anyway we're, we're talking about the warden so and of course the biggest change to the warden was the change to arctic blast so arctic blast it used to be you have to hit someone like three times in a row and then you can stun them um, that's what the warden lacked was a reliable cc now you have a reliable CC. Not only is it a reliable CC, it's also an AOE CC. Not only is it an AOE CC, but it also heals you. So this ability does so many global cooldowns in one. So it has like three different global cooldowns in one ability. So that's a really, really good change for the Magic of Warden. But to be honest, guys, um, it, it's, it's just kind of underwhelming. It's a very telegraph class. You know when you're about to get bursted. And even though it did get a lot of love, I'm definitely not going to be putting it in, in, in a meta tier just because there's only like a couple of different ways of playing it, right? So I'm probably going to put Magical Warden in the... Ooh, probably still beats here right now. Last patch, it was definitely kind of down in the trash tier area, but uh, I think it's earned its spot up here in B tier, kind of floating in between A and B. Let me know what you guys kind of think down in the comments. All right, so now we're going to the, the Stamina Warden. Now, the Stamina Warden is it's just, it's just better than the Magical Warden. Again, with the Dizzying Swing Spam, the amount of pressure and damage you can put out from any Stamina classes is patch. It just, just seems like a Stamina meta, guys. Just because, like again, the meta shifted away from dots, and now you need Bursty Boys to damage. And Stamina Warden can just bring it, man. And there's kind of nothing scarier than a Clever Alchemist, Balrogs, Plague Break, Spin to Win, Warden is coming at you, right? It's been featured in Christopher Top 5 several times, and whenever you see that combo go off, it is absolutely deadly. So when it comes to being able to handle other players from a solo or small group perspective, I do believe that the Stamina Warden is is, is just better than the Magical Warden in probably every sense of the word, all right? And just because the spammable is a lot better from Dizzy Swing, again, we're kind of reiterating back to the Dizzy Swing off-balance exploiter cp passage if you don't play the warden that way i mean that's completely okay but when it comes from what you're able to do on the stamina warden compared to the magical warden i just think stamina just does everything the magical warden does but better 
All right, guys, so the next class is the Templar. Now, I feel so bad for the Templar, not really, that they got nerfed absolutely into oblivion, all right? So the damage of power of light has been decreased. The healing's been reduced. The puncturing sweeps is an absolute shit show. And while this class used to be like the absolute king of 1VXing, no doubt the highest damage, the highest tank ability, survivability, you know, whatever you want to say, it is definitely not meta anymore, and uh, Templar is kind of, kind of been reined in a little bit. Now you can't just like charge in, you know, with your bubbles up, and you you just outlive all the healing with puncturing jabs, sweep, you know, whatever. You know, the, this class got going for it. Like you can't be doing that anymore. You actually have to play smart and not be brain dead like the Dragonite when you charge in to fight, right? So. Um, from a 1vx like 2vx standpoint the, the Templar just offers like so much utility just kind of around the board the healing is still really good it's a pretty easy class to pick up and play you know just just casually and be pretty decent at it so instead of being s tier i'm probably going to put the Templar probably in a tier right now uh, just because it's still really good and doing what it does you do have to change up your play style quite a bit because the whole nerf to the puncturing jabs is is crazy um i don't know why they felt the need to change that they just needed to kind of tweak some of the numbers a little bit but according to zoss and some of the spoiler comments they, they they want to it's something to do with the data feedback in the servers and some sometimes this skill just hits extremely hard for like no reason you know based on the recordings of the damage instances like every 500 milliseconds or, or, or some technical bullshit you know what i mean but Anyways, they, they felt they need to completely rework the identity of the Templar, and it, it, it just sucks. I mean, so many people complain about it. Rarely do I, rarely do I ever see jabs anymore, so but it's still a really good class, though, all around. So I'm going to give it an A, and that's going to kind of lead into the stamina variants of that. And, and again, I, I don't really see... Th this is one instance where I'm not going to rank the stamina variants higher than the magic variant just because the stamina variant just kind of does whatever the, the the magic of one does but it's it's just considerably less tanky um while their ill ears while <laughs> english hard while there is more build variability on the stamina variants in my opinion i just don't think that it can outperform its magic counterpart in any way shape or form when it comes to damage survivability so uh, for that reason i'm probably going to put the Stamplar in B tier. I almost won't put it in C tier, but I know, I know as soon as I put it in C tier, there are going to be some sweaty ass Stamplars in the comments. Like, oh, Horcrux, you know what you're talking about, blah, 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 blah. And, and you're probably right. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I know for a fact, when I'm in open world, I do not see a Stamplar. That's for damn sure. They're all Magplars, and there has to be a reason. So as far as my personal experiences in the meta and what I've come across and what I've had the hardest time dealing with, I'm going to put the Stamplar actually down here the more i'm talking myself into it so last and certainly not least is going to be the necro now in my opinion guys the necro is like the king of 1vx that like you have the easiest bomb setups of literally any single class in the game you can use dark convergence into your huge ass colossus and you're going to one shot someone and someone in that group is going to pop with a coal overload which is an amazing new passive and now the necros that actually have access to scythe so the new changes to scythe is that it's going to give you a lot more health back it's got i think they increase the damage on it as well correct me on that if i'm wrong down in the comments but it also inflicts stas effects so you know you're always going to apply the occult overload uh to people you kill that's 12,800 oblivion damage unresistible by the way even if a dk is in his corrosive he's still going to get hit by 12,800 ticks every single time you kill someone next to them with occult overload now macro doesn't really have a neutral game you kind of go in do your 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 one button combo or two three button combos and you try to bomb a group of people and that's it you save up another 500 for your battle rocks proc and you do it again now, as far as neutral games concerned you really don't have it but this pvp tier list is from like a 1vx or 2vx perspective and no other class can do it better than the mag pro so i'm going to put that in the a tier list now stam crow this is on a whole nother level than the macro because of the heavy burst meta guys like stam crow just just does everything the macro does but he can just do it better and get away with it um damage is still eerily the same you have a lot better neutral game there are some other changes i didn't go over kind of like the the changes to uh, the the ghosty boy that heals you and you know a lot of little changes that, that really don't make or break a class but the meta is high burst and that's it man that, that's all the stam pro does is super high burst with your spin to win uh, you don't have really have to do spin to win if you don't want to you, you can do sight you can scythe people down but but spin to wins is definitely a much more effective 
And yeah, for that reason, I'm just going to put it in the meta tier, just because quite frankly, your neutral game, again, is a really, really strong, guys. You know, with dizzying swing spam and your blast bones, the blast bones hit so freakishly hard, man. Like, it it really does. And it's kind of brain dead. That's all you have to do. This whole patch is brain dead. You just spam two buttons and that's it. I mean, that's any stamina class, like dizzying swing spam is just, just kind of the way to go, man. I... I, I, it sucks that it's back to this meta, but I mean, it is what it is. So again, we're going to put it in the meta tier for now. I'm kind of teetering on the idea between A and meta tier, but uh, man, I've seen a lot of clips. I've seen a lot of bombs and they've all been from a stam pro. So macro can do it. Yes, but it does require a lot tougher setup on your part and you're less tanky in general compared to a stam pro. So with that being said, I'm going to put stam pro meta. So here is a snapshot of the tier list your boy Horcrux has created. Now, if you disagree with anything at all or think that I'm just off my hinges and that I don't know what I'm talking about with any of these classes, by all means, like my ass up down in the comments. I'm just telling you guys from my perspective, what I have encountered in Serial as a solo player on Dragonite, these are the classes that give me the hardest time. And not only are these the classes that give me the hardest time, these are also the exact same classes I see much better results from. I've picked up Sork, cannot play it. I've tried Warden, man, maybe I'm just not good at Warden, but I can't play Warden whatsoever. So yeah, there it is. I tried playing Sam DK. Your boy Horcrux hasn't played a stamina class ever. It's still gonna take some tweaking to do, but I will have a stamina Dragonite build coming out for you guys after they nerf Mars ball sack so please hit the like subscribe and bell notification icon if you finally want to see your boy Horcrux after eight years playing a stamina class and also putting out a stamina build so you cannot miss that I know I'm gonna get live down in the comments but I don't care I think stamina is actually really fun so that does it for the tier list guys again thank you all so much for watching until the end of the video and if you want to help support the channel down in the description I have a list of everything that you guys really need to know if you want to join membership here on YouTube, we have all kinds of cool custom badges. I'm trying to get up to 30 members here on YouTube just so I can submit an amalgamation of custom emojis for you guys uh, during chat as well. And if you go with the chat again here, you actually get one-on-one -on -one PvP coaching when you hit me up in Discord. So if you're interested in joining PvP, but you just feel like something's missing, it's not there, you just need help with one little thing, or maybe you need a complete overhaul and you're just jumping into PvP for the first time, and you need a little bit of guidance to expedite that process, man, I got you back, all right? And also on Patreon, uh, Patreon kind of does the exact same things, but YouTube doesn't take a cut of that. You know what I mean? So if you go to Patreon, you can actually do like a, like a year in advance and I actually get most of that revenue instead of YouTube, you know, kind of skimming off the top. So just two different ways to help support the channel. But the best way to do so is with a simple like and sub. I mean, it really does go a long way. So enough self shield at the end of the video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.